Good morning, Andrew, Dan, Dornbush Park. Andrew. Good morning, Dan, Dornbush, download. Yes, thank you very much. It's only <laughs> 11 o'clock. Uh, Dornbush, download number 54. So wow. uh, just quite slowly creeping up towards uh, 100, but a yep. long way to go yet. Um, first day in the office for you this week, Dan. Where have you been all week? Yeah, at a conference on Monday, which was good. Uh, Self-managed super fund conference and uh, out with clients yesterday. It was nice, bribey, sitting on a canal over a chicken oh. salad lunch. So that, that was been, very good. And we have to say we really appreciate when we go visit clients, especially our Western trips. I yes. uh, put on about eight kilos every time because right. everyone <laughs> bakes stuff for us. So it's really appreciated. Thank you very much. So um, Monday, the Self-Managed Super Conference, what did you get out of that? Got a few things out of that, Andrew. There was some fund managers presented. One of the big things out of that was they were really positive, the US. Um, okay. And well, I suppose the caveat there is depending what they do with the interest rates, and that's yeah. later this month now, isn't it? That's sort of creeping up on us. There's, uh, according to the futures market, it was like 100% or pretty close to it earlier in August, and then of course all that volatility, and now we're back at about a 32% chance that interest yeah, rates will right. go up. So it's still a risk, but I think that risk is diminishing. Yep. So I think the, the guess there is really um, the ETF. Mm -hmm. The exchange traded fund over the US. And we've spoken uh, um, in recent weeks about a few of those different yeah. ETFs. So, yeah. Yeah. The other thing was um, one of the presenters really thinks that it's the demerger cycle within the share market now. So he's sort of thinking that the regulators with their need for banks to have additional capital are mm -hmm. basically telling the banks to demerge out you know, the MLCs and... BTs. Well, BTs already done it, but yeah. BTs that, done, yeah. That type of stuff. Okay. And because, as we know, we've been talking for the last few weeks about bank share purchase plans and so banks being forced to bring in more. Yeah. And so that bloke's basically saying it's going to be even more pressure on to, to do that, to get yeah. money in the door. Mm. And okay. that's one good thing about the way our banks are regulated, though, Andrew, isn't it? Like, they don't get the chance to whinge about it. The, the regulator just says, you've got to do it, yeah. and, and it's done. So. It, it reduces shareholder return, which in the short term is not so flash, but the flip side is when things are going to custard, yep. there's less things to go wrong, and you've got sort of things behind you, because as yeah. we know, banks are highly leveraged. You know, if you look at a Without bank... deposits. Well, if you look at a bank, it's like... 10% basically is their own money, 90% is either somebody else's money or money lent out. So you only need a small change in the asset values that they've lent against for things to go wrong. Yep. Ask people in Ireland. Mm. So, yeah, and it's a good. a few other places. So it's good, you know, to have APRA, the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority, who frankly dropped the ball with um, HIH, dare I mention that, back in 2000. Yeah. Since then, they've really been on top of this. So for bank shareholders, that's probably a good thing. Yeah, what a else? positive thing. What else did you a lot, get out? A lot around self Manage super fund compliance, and that's the big issue now. The the Australian Tax Office, because there's so many self managed super funds and so much money in self managed super funds now, the the ATO is really looking at the compliance side of it. And one suggestion was, which we probably never do, is read your audit report. Mm. Well, we it? don't because we don't. it's not our report to read. But you know, one in four of our clients are self managed super funds or hold self managed super yep. funds. So, you know, certainly one Have of you the read your audit report. Sadly, because I'm married to an accountant, hi no. Sarah. <laughs> um, but but, you know, I, I reckon the vast majority of people go, oh, yeah, thanks very much, accountant, and that's the last they look at it. So, you know, from yeah. our internal checkbox asking clients every year, that'll be one of the questions we're asking clients, yeah. have, have you read your have you had a report? Look because we don't get it. No. But it's your fund, you need to be reading it. Yeah. So, yeah, which, okay. is, which is a good one. Mm. Um, any compliance issues and pension payment issues, you know, review those in May, get them out of the way, that way you're well and truly covered yep. in June. Good idea. Really, the corporate trustee is really the preferred way to go to now instead of individuals, trustees. And and one thing they're saying there, if you actually do get fined by the ATO, it's one fine because there's one trustee being the corporate oh, rather than two gotcha. individuals. So, so you get double the fines. So what we're talking about is that a number of self-managed super funds have Andrew and Sarah as an example because I'm too lazy uh, have got you know, individual trustees or joint trustees as it would be uh, whereas because we set up our self-managed fund 10 11 years ago whereas these days it's just it's non-negotiable we just basically set up a self-managed fund and it's a corporate trustee Dan Mark's proprietary limited as yes. trustee for the Dan Mark super fund yeah, exactly so right. Um, you know, if you are holding a self-managed fund and you are individual trustees, you probably do actually need to have a bit of a look at yeah. that, you know. And plus, if, if something happens to one of you, 
it's just a form to sign then rather than go and get another trustee. There's yeah. a lot, lot of work. The, oh, it's simple, plain laziness. That's the only reason I haven't done yeah. it. You know, if you do, if you have joint trustees, you need to get a corporate trustee. And we could talk for the next three hours about yes. that type of well, stuff. Well, we could, couldn't we? Mm. Really? The other big thing, I think, was they, they're they really thinking, you know, when you're in an allocated pension, you don't pay tax on the pension that comes out to you and you don't pay tax on the inside. And if you're investing in shares, you're getting franking credit, so you're actually getting a tax deduction not to pay tax. Yeah. Or a tax refund not yeah. to pay tax. And yeah. That's got to change. Um, oh, that, without that was a doubt. the other big thing. So, yeah. you know, if you're on the fringe of, of an allocated pension or, or a transition to retirement allocated pension, it's seriously worth having a look at because they're normally grandfathered, aren't they? You know, the new rules kick in from a certain date. So Absolutely. that's really something to investigate there. And frankly, with an ageing population and all that type of stuff too, you know, and you're exactly our target right. market, you should be having a chat to us about mm -hmm. that type of stuff. Yep. Um, companies, what have you been looking at? Yeah, we, we were having a chat about the small tech stocks earlier, Andrew, weren't we? And I've been looking at a company called iSign This, the, the ticker code's ISX. The European Union are really changing the way, uh, I'll take a step back, there's a lot of fraud, you know, and, and we're seeing that more and more, aren't we? Yep. Um, one of the ways that the European Union's working on this is they've come up with a set of regulations that companies have got to adhere to, to be able to do these electronic type transfers. Mm -hmm. And there's only two companies at the moment that actually meet those requirements. One's PayPal, yes. this massive big thing, and one's I sign this, this little 17 cent company in Australia. So Dan at dp.net.au, if you'd <laughs> like a YouTube um, video on a recent presentation they did, send us an email and I'll shoot you out a link for you to have a look at. And again, it's probably more at the pointy end. It's very much at the pointy end. But it's certainly a huge potential. And that's and really and signing up um, contracts now for income streams. So, okay. you know, it's, it's probably the real ground floor. Yeah, yeah. So if, if continuing in the pointy end world, but probably not as pointy, but still pointy-ish. Uh, mine is Big Air, BGL is the code, and they basically provide Wi-Fi. If, if you had to sort of sum it up in a sentence, they provide Wi-Fi, uh, fixed wireless broadband to businesses. So they've got the largest fixed wireless broadband corporate business in the country, Sydney, Melbourne, whatever. Uh, but they've, been, they've also been targeting niche markets. And as we were saying before, like targeting uni students and rest mm. colleges, because because they don't use Wi-Fi to watch YouTube or anything like that. They're hard, studying away at uni and you know in the library and all that type of stuff naturally. No, no gaming. No, none of that type of stuff. <laughs> so uh, they came out with a cracking result the other day. They've been going around buying different little businesses. And so the big opportunity for them is to actually start cross-selling all these different services, yes. uh, things like VoIP, voice over internet protocol, that type of stuff. Uh, like another one of our favourites, my net phone, MNF, um, but we're talking about BGL today. But yeah, you know, you can sort of stick to the Telstra's and Telstra's going along really well, 6% fully franked or whatever yep. it is. But, you know, there's real growth in the TPGs, TPH, MTUs, the M2s, um, you know, um, and as I said, they're really getting foothold on the smaller BGL. companies. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so a couple of uh, more pointy in ones to, to think about. Mm. Um, anything else going on? I think that's about us that's done. That's about it. Oh, probably the one brief thing. Uh, we saw Woodside have a go at Origin, uh, not Origin, um, at All Search rather yesterday. And that to me sort of is, from my point of view, is the bottoming of the market relating to commodities. And I think, you know, we look at how it's going to look in six months' time in that energy space, and it's going to be a very different mix. Totally different. Santos yep. probably won't be around. Who knows what's going to happen with Origin? And by not around, as in someone will take it over. But even yep. in the smaller place, the Senexes, the drill searches, the beaches, uh, there's going to be a lot of consolidation. And certainly uh, Woodside, with a cheap bid for oil search, that's a bit of a harbinger. Mm. So, again, have a chat to us about some Just opportunities. Testing the water, aren't they? Oh, it's, they're trying to get away with it too cheaply. Mm. But, I mean, if you make an offer on a house, as an example, do you go in with your best bid first? Of course you don't. So, uh, you know, it's going to be, that's going to be a really interesting space to watch over mm. the next six months. Anyway, Very until good. next week, thank you.